Welcome to Dallas and Eric at the Whiteboard. Today's episode is sponsored by AJ's Equipment Cleaning. AJ's Equipment Cleaning offers state-of-the-art sterilization cleaning for your gym and all of its fitness equipment. Contact AJ's Equipment Cleaning at gmail.com. We're also brought to you by Dad Bod Apparel. Visit dadbodapparel.com and use discount code WHITEBOARD. We're also brought to you by Black Crane Supplements. Use promo code WELCOME to get 20% off your entire order. BlackCraneSupplements.com We're also brought to you by Fire Lotto, a cryptocurrency lottery system with a prize pool of almost $1 million. Go to BlackCraneSupplements.com, click on Fire Lotto, and follow the very simple instructions. Good luck. We're also brought to you by StashCo. StashCo offers a wide variety of beard oils, creams, and waxes, and all sorts of different accessories. Use promo code CRANE20 to get 20% off your order at stashcompany.com. As always, we're brought to you by CrossFit of San Mateo. For all the details that CrossFit San Mateo can offer you, Visit CrossFitSM.com. <laughs> All right. As I say, we should probably pop into the actual podcast for those of you that actually are listening to our uh, fitness podcast. Dallas and Eric at the Whiteboard, episode six. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Ish. Ish. Epi- episode blank until you can figure it out. Yeah, TBD. Um, Tuberculosis. Been tested. <laughs> I'm not infected. I've got the test to prove it. Cat Williams. Um, today we will be going over Planet Fitness. My visit that I had there maybe three weeks ago now with my brother back in my hometown of Yuba City. Um, social circles and how they affect not just health and fitness but life in general and what you're looking to do. Um, so we're going to start with, with Planet Fitness. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead. I'm just going to tell you exactly what happened. So my brother, did you get kicked out? No, thank goodness, because I, I was explaining the rules prior. So we had a family event, family function. My grandma just passed. So everybody's there. My brother came in from Missouri, um, our entire family together. And I still want to work out. My brother just got a job at Planet Fitness. At and that one? At that one. So he's super excited. They just opened, and he's like, oh, I got myself a job at this Planet Fitness, working at a gym now. He's real excited. He's like, oh, that's cool. All right, man. <clears throat> and I was like, hey, what time is your gym open? He's like, oh, it's 24 hours. So I said, cool, let's go. And he's like, okay, well, we're going a couple hours. He's, he has stuff to do. He's like, okay. So I'm sitting there, and I don't know and have never been to a Planet Fitness. So in my head, I just think it's just a big little gym, like 24, gold or crunch. And... My brother and his wife are on the couch and like, have you ever been to a Planet Fitness before? I was like, no. You know, but I mean, it's gym. Like, come on. I own my own. And like, okay. Um, it's a little bit different than most other gyms. So I begin to ask like, what do you mean it's different? They have pizza Fridays. Yeah, good night. <laughs> there was a big bowl of candy at the yeah. front desk. Because there's no judgment there. Yeah, that's what they were saying. Yeah. So they're like, well... You know, they, they may not have all the equipment that you're used to. I was like, oh, that's fine. I just need, you know, barbells, plates, and dumbbells. That's all I need. Yeah. They didn't have any barbells, free weights. It was all just the Smith machine at an angle, mind you. So anyway, they're explaining to me all so this there's no There's no dumbbells? They have dumbbells. Oh. But no no barbells, no, no free weights. There's no bench? No. What do they have there? It's only Smith machine. Like, if you want a free rack, if you want to, like, so take your bar up and, like... Was it, like, a glorified curves? A very big glorified curves. And purple. Very purple. Very purple. <laughs> so, they explained to me all these different things, including the... The lunk. The lunk alarm, yeah. It's this big, massive sign on the top with a big purple uh, it's like, bulb. It's like, it's like a police light, right? Yeah. yeah. And... They said that as soon as somebody's being too bro or too weightlifty, 
or whatever else they do, they report them to the front desk. And the front desk hits the alarm, and all of a sudden this pew, pew, lung alarm goes off. And that person that had the alarm pressed against them gets a strike on their membership or their account. If you get three strikes, then you get removed from the gym. Jeez. What happened to the no judgment? <sighs> That's what I was saying. So anyway, my brother's like, hey, let's go. I was like, okay. So I'm, I'm a bit nervous because now I'm walking into a gym where everything that I do every day at my gym would get me kicked out of this gym. You have to keep your shirt on? You, you definitely have to keep your shirt on. I was so sweaty. It was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we go and, you know, you walk in, it's just a normal gym. And I, I sign my little waivers right next to this giant bowl of candy. In the front desk, people are eating. My brother's eating. And these people walk in. Oh, hey, everybody. Grab all this candy. What do these people look like? Are they are they in shape? I'll get I'll get I'll get into the or is uh, round to shape. Round to shape, and then there's multiple shapes oh. <laughs> connected to each other's shape. <laughs> we I go on the floor and I know my way around the gym. I've been going for gym for almost twenty years, and again that's when I realized okay they really meant there's no barbells, there's no actual free weights. They have three Smith machines, and the the bars the handles were two inches wide. Huh. And there was nothing was straight up and down. It was all at big angles. So I just wanted to like, okay, spin machine, I'll do some rack pulls just to get my chain warmed up, my last warmed up. I thought I might do some back. You have to do such an odd angle because everything's at such a cockeyed angle. Anyway, the machines were so clean because they, they spray them with all their, their spray cleaner stuff all the time that you can't grab on the bar. And it didn't even occur to me. Oh, was it like almost yeah, like oily that, and slippery? That, that film. Oh, the film. Yeah. Yeah. And so it didn't even occur to me. It's like, oh, let's get some chalk. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. So you're trying to grip onto this thing. Anyway, it, it, it doesn't work. Yeah. And I'm working out. I'm working out. And all I was doing just some rack pulls. And I took for the first time some like bodybuilder pre-workout again, some good C4 and good inno pump, yeah. and starting to get the juices flowing. And as I'm lifting, you just see all the heads next to me kind of turn over, just start peeking around their machines as I'm just putting the weights on. Everybody's just looking over what I'm doing. And no big deal. Whatever. I've, I've been yeah. strong on my gym for a while. Um, and my brother's over there doing some cardio stuff. And he walks over and he's like, hey, bro, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I'm doing some rack pulls. And he's like, yeah, I never use these machines, mainly because I have no idea how. He's like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll teach you. Mm-hmm. So I'm showing him how to you know, move properly, and obviously he's not using any weight. He's just learning. Sure. So I ended up taking him through a, a little Bible routine with just some back and some arms and just some good yeah, some just, pump mirror yeah, stuff. Some, some blood going. Yeah. And as I'm doing all this, I'm looking throughout the gym, and everybody has eyes on us. Everybody. And I'll go into why that is in a little bit. But You had a hole in your pants. Dude, you would think. <laughs> so... We, we finished our workout, and again, it was just, I mean, I think we did a little cardio piece at the end. It was just a row and some lunches. Yeah. Um, and then... Oh, they have, do they have a rower? They had the water rowers. Have you ever used those? No. So there's a big bubble, a big plastic ball at the end of the rower, mm-hmm. and inside is a fan, and you row against the water. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely a different sensation than the regular Concept 2 ergs, but... It worked. So I was like, I'll I'll make do. I made do with worse. I worked on a boat Mm -hmm. for two years. Yeah. Um, So we made it work. So we got home. Oh, and the alarm hit. Somebody hit the alarm, Mm -hmm. the lunk alarm when I was there. Yeah. And it was when I had like three plates on. Sorry. Hang on one second. Yeah, no problem. Hello? Business two feet in. Dude, have you been hit with more and more calls? Oh, it's the worst. Dude, I've been getting, like, I used to get two or three. I've been getting, like, 10 to 12. Yeah. Like, My, a lot. Ju- Just in the last couple of days, it's doubled. Yeah. Yeah. I've doubled in the last, like, two weeks. No. Okay. So. So I'm back, and I'm, I had, you know, I had three plates on, and I was doing my lifts, and you can't, like, the Smith machines are, you're going to make a little noise. Yeah. And I was being cognizant, because I didn't want to embarrass my brother, who sure. worked there. Yeah. And then get kicked out of his gym. Yeah. So I'm just sitting down, and all of a sudden, I'm in the middle of this lift, and you hear this, wheel, wheel. And, dude, it makes you jump. Like, it's dangerous. So I look over, and I'm looking around, like, was that me? So I asked my brother, I said, dude, did I do something to 
screw this up? You know, was I lifting too, too hardcore? He's like, no, no, it was on somebody else. And was, it's funny because I was looking around. I was like, who in here <laughs> would have this alarm pushed on them? There's nobody. Anyway, so we go home and I get, I get down. We're all hanging out the, the living room. And my brother, so what you guys, you know, what you think of the gym now? I was like, you know, the gym was fine. Obviously missing some equipment. And, and this is where I kind of got, got real because I own a gym mm-hmm. and it's my job to make sure people are working out properly. It's my life. And I told him, I said, but you know, I feel really, really bad for everybody in that gym. And he took a step back and my entire family was like, what makes you say that? And, and here's why. So the reason all the eyes were on me and my brother when we were working out was not because I looked like some amazing Greek god. Although you may do. <laughs> it's because they saw somebody who, A, knew what they were doing, was doing it properly, and then helping somebody else. Nobody in that gym knew what they were doing. So sure, you have a gym where there's, quote unquote, no judgment. There's no bro lifting or no, dare I say, actual working out, Mm -hmm. Um, which means you're going to exclude the entire people that you're trying and aspiring to be like. Nobody goes in there and is like, oh, I just want to stay the same. I just want to move. No, you're trying to get better. And so I said, I, I kind of felt bad for everybody. And my brother kind of took offense to this. And he's like, oh, well, everybody in there, they're just starting. Or they're injured. Or they just had this. Or they just had that. And they're not used to working out in front of people. I said, no, I, I totally understand that. But here's the thing. None of them have any clue on what they're doing. Do they have tra- – I've never been to one they of these. They have one fitness consultant guy. But no, they don't have any trainers. So anyway, I explained, I said, look, all these people talk to my brother were, were staring at us, at you, and me coaching you and showing you how to do things because they wanted to know how to do things properly. I said, if you take out all of the amazing artwork and paintings in a painting class, and you just have a white canvas and paint, and you say, okay, everybody, go ahead and paint a good painting, guess what? They have no idea what a good painting is. They have no actual goal to aspire to. They don't know how to move properly. They don't know what proper muscles look like, except for maybe magazine. I said, so by taking all those people away, like I would go ask questions when I first started. Hey man, I saw you doing that move. You know, why, why were you doing that? Mm-hmm. Can you show me that? And I've had dozens, if not hundreds of people actually not think about it when I was in Globo Gym. Hey man, can you show me how to do that? Or can you help me with this? Because I was there. If I wasn't there, they would have no idea. And they started to kind of understand, like, oh, I I kind of see what you mean. And I think that that's something that's so missing that people are so afraid of being judged, like it's a bad thing when you walk into something new and you're not perfect at it, Mm -hmm. that they're they're afraid of being, I guess, guess judged in a bad way. But I know that when I walked in there, I... You guys are new. Yeah. I can tell. Yeah. So guess what? You're not going to move perfectly. That's fine. But if they don't have any any sight on an actual proper movement or a, a, a proper looking body, then they're not going to know where they're going. And if you don't know where you're going, you're going to stay in the same place and not hurt yourself. Um, and so that's why I felt kind of bad, especially being a trainer myself to move home to gym. Mm-hmm. Like I felt these people. I was like, dang, I wish I could go by and just help every single one of these guys, yeah. girls and older people, at least move properly to, or give them instruction on how to do what they're doing. Well, especially if, if a good majority of these people, like Brother said, are, you know, they're injured or whatever, they need, they need that guidance they, to make exactly. sure that it doesn't make it worse. Yes. So there's all this no judgment, no judgment. What they need to put on there is no instruction. Nobody cares on their wall yeah. because that's the truth. If you bring a few bros in there, a few guys that have worked out for 20 years that are just poof, the man, guess what? That's going to raise your knowledge and your your membership base capacity. Even if those people didn't go directly to those guys and ask them, they can at least learn from like a visual demonstration. Yep. Oh, I saw that guy doing that. Yep. That's how you do that. Because the second I started moving – 
the guy next to me was emulating what I was doing. Yeah. He didn't talk to me. He didn't have to. And, and guys like us, we know. Yeah, yeah, people yeah. watch what yeah. we do. It's no different than if you go do something you're new at and you see somebody doing it right, you're going to try and emulate what the right guy's doing. Yeah. So I think if they would allow more of those kind of guys in there and not try and keep them away, they would. I think they'd have a much more successful gym. Granted, they're not necessarily worried about people's results. Hmm. They're not. They had about six to 7,000 members, and the gym is holding maybe 100 people. Yeah. Tops. Well, and I remember, I've talked to a couple people that, that own the franchises for these, mm-hmm. and they, they know that a lot, a lot of people are just gonna set up their EFT system, and they're, they're gonna go in, and then they're just gonna forget about it, and they'll just keep paying it because what is it? It was nine ninety nine a month. Yeah, dude, it's like eleven dollars. Yeah, uh, but and it, and it gets you a lot. I'll give it to them. Like for nineteen ninety nine, you get this entire plethora of stuff. But what you don't get is any quality instruction or byproduct. You don't get any real results. Yeah. Now, if you want to go and use the spa, twenty bucks for a spa day is not too bad. No, that's not bad at all. Yeah, I thought I'd just do it for that. But uh, for the for the close to one, you know, just for having nice clean cardio equipment, would be nice too. Exactly. Um, all in all, the experience I had was good. I just I just felt bad for him. Yeah, that's a little disheartening to hear. I mean, I just look at them like that. Be trying to go build IKEA furniture with no instructions. A hundred percent, exactly. And I think if if they didn't want to bring the bros in, the bros. And I use bros as a very general term. Yeah. Um, if they didn't want to bring in the already built guys. What they need to do is have a fully staffed uh, training program that has eight to ten guys walking around training people. Hello? Good, how are you? I am not. I believe Audrey is, though. Are you, are you at the building? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, shit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, do you have a better? You ready for it? Yeah. Sorry. I thought you guys were going to be there a little bit later. I'm actually in San Mateo right now. Oh, okay. Uh, if something happens and you can't get a hold of Audrey, just let me know and I'll blast right back. All right, thanks, Jim. <clears throat> That's the most frustrating thing, is when I have contractors coming in, oh. and they tell me, oh, okay, we're going to be there between 3 and 5. So I set my day up for 3 and 5. <laughs> so I know that I have time to get office work done, got plenty of time to do podcast-related things, and, you know, I can run to the post office, do my orders, and they're like, well, we're here. And I'm like, okay, well... It doesn't do me any good. This comes back down to moral and, and integrity right there. Moral like, integrity. It'd been one thing if they called me and they're like, oh, hey, we got done early. Can we come Can by? we come by? I'd be like, yeah, that's, let's, they, do let's do it. Not, yo, we're here. here. Open the door. I'm like, no. First of all, don't demand stuff from me. Especially when you're five hours early. Right. Yeah. I'm like. Like, I moved a lot of stuff around to be there for three and five. Do you need to go? No, no, no. Just gotcha. No, I'm annoying. Know. So, yeah. I had a good time with Planet Fitness. Yeah, it sounds like an interesting thing. I mean, you know, my, my mother goes to one uh, just, you know, to do, like, her, like, cardio things because yeah. when they, because they get such bad weather where she lives oh, because it gets yeah. you know, 115 That's in the true. summer and then it gets you know almost zero degrees in the winter where they are. Yeah. She's like, oh, well, it's air conditioned and it's heated for the winter so I don't have to worry about my joints being so it bad. It kind of works. And I think Planet Fitness, if you're listening, I think your membership base would really enjoy a set of, of six to ten trainers walking your floors, giving instruction, not necessarily like a one-on-one, yeah. but just, hey, no, 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 try this. Hey, that's not safe. Try this. Hey, do this. Because those instructions go a long ways with that crowd. Because yeah. what you are attracting is all the first timers, the elderly, the inexperienced, and people who just don't want to be looked at. So all those people are not your traditional 
I've been in the gym for 15 years. I had a brother that taught me how to lift. I know what I'm doing. That's a, that population has no idea how to lift. And if you gave them the instructions right there, man, I mean, you, I guarantee you people pay five extra dollars to have oh. trainers walking around there. Oh, yeah. Well, I used to manage a gym up north when I was going through college. And it was one of those kind of situations like that. It was primarily like an elderly gym and mm-hmm. things like that. I mean, we had some younger people in there, but still, you know, no no one had any guidance. You just, yeah. you paid and they didn't have anyone working the front. You just... They come in and it's like they hope for the best. Yeah. They're like, well, no sense. well, then the owner was an interesting guy. I mean, he, he had some other stuff going on, but he was like, well, they signed a waiver. So if they get hurt, that's on them. So I said, well, I have a background with conscious prep related things. And, and we've got another gentleman there who is a private contractor trainer. Why don't we actually give something back to these people that are paying so much money every month for the membership fee? Let's have maybe one day a month of like ask a trainer. And so this gentleman and I sit there and almost every single member of this gym would show up. Whoa. And they had questions. They just wanted someone to walk them through how to use a machine or whatever a workout might be to benefit them if they, you know, had an injury or something yeah. like that. Maybe there's a market for a gym that does that. Maybe. I mean, we do it for CrossFit, but in school classes. Yeah. But not like an open floor you know, it's a 24 hour model. Yeah, just come in and ask questions. And that, and that was the biggest thing. It's like, well, let's see, do people really want help or do they just want to be left alone? Yeah. So we just put it out there and said, look, you know, on this day, we're gonna have some people that are willing to answer all your questions. Come in if you have any. Everyone came in, the place was packed. There was no parking, there was nowhere for people to sit. Wow. And um, it's like, well, the people people actually want to learn. See, and they're, and they're, they're, they're just shy. 100%. And yeah, again, when, you, when you're just starting, when you're, when you're inexperienced, when you're elderly, or when you see people that might be intimidating, yeah, you're going to be shy. So I think these places, when you attract that demographic, need to try and at least help prop them up for some semblance of success. Not just opening up a door. That's literally all the staff does. So anyway, although we may care more about the actual people than most of these it's probably, it's probably why we make less money than they do. You're probably right. I know. I was, I was looking at the membership. I was like, hey, they have X amount of members. They charge X amount for a membership. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I know. It's mind-blowing. I was like, maybe, maybe there's something there. But people complain sometimes about how expensive CrossFit can be. Mm-hmm. But in every single class, you have a personal trainer. Yeah. And doing movements that you've never done before. And at least you have someone there to give you guidance when needed if you're doing it wrong here how's we this is how we can do it to make it safer make it better and you have people in your class that you're aspiring to be like not just a magazine you're like hey i'm gonna try and lift like like him he's my age he's my height he's my size like don't take for granted that like that's such a big piece instead of just blindly wandering a field hoping to find a fruit and a berry that's gonna you know sustain you like have an idea have a plan anyway yeah well no i mean last night i went to just you know one of the corporate gyms right down the road Mm -hmm. because i was i'd been on the road you know the better part of like 20 hours (laughs) and uh i got home and i was like okay i i gotta do something i gotta sweat out some of this truck stop food because oh it's all this along with five you can (laughs) it's all highway five and those pilots yes oh (laughs) but I, i was sitting in the car Drinking Red Bulls and plowing through orange soda and just gross food, tasty. But I, I knew that it was not it was not good. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I gotta go in. And I, I mean, through the warm up, I could feel just like the grease Ooh. sweating out. Yeah, it was like it felt like bacon grease. Yeah. And uh, when you get as clammy as clean gym equipment. Yeah, it was gross. And I was sitting there just trying to chug as much alkalized water as I could, <laughs> but. As I looked around at the people, I don't normally go during that time frame yeah. because I'm usually asleep. And and I just looked around and I cringed. It was, you know, these horrific forms where you're just looking like, this person is going to get injured. Yes. Yeah. And then you just wonder, well, what do they think they're working out? <laughs> yes. That was one of my questions to myself was, what do they think they're doing? Mm-hmm. 
like when you're try when you're doing a tricep extension and your shoulders are up by your ears and your hands are far away from your body and you're 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 making some semblance of a push down. Where are they getting any of their movement and instruction, whether right or wrong? It's it's even if you look at a magazine, like that's not what you're seeing in the magazine. But you see it at a gym all the time. I guess the moral of this lesson is sure it's great if you have a gym, just like it's great if you have a car. But if you don't know how to drive it, you're gonna run the risk of really injuring yourself. So find instruction. More of that story. Maybe we should open up a drive in school too. <laughs> dude, dude, uh, that's true. I, yeah, like a driver's license too. Yeah, two point Yeah, I agree. Freeway driving. Well, what the? I get so mad at Uber and Lyft drivers. With the lack of blinkers. With the lack of blinkers. With the just stopping in the middle of the road. I don't care if you have just like just stop in the middle of the road. Oh, yeah, drives me up the wall. Anyway, I've seen people do. The craziest U-turns in spots that you cannot do no, U-turns, yeah. and you can see that there's people in the car. I would be so terrified if I'm if I'm the person paying you to drive me. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and at least if you're doing a taxi cab, you're like, you guys are professionals. I know. Ish. But if not, dude, if you're just an Uber Lyft driver, they're just guys who can't do anything else. No offense to Uber Lyft drivers, but you wouldn't be driving Uber or Lyft if you had a would you? No. Well, one, I, I would not want people in my personal car. Dude, hundred percent. Yeah. So like the few Shag carpet down. The few times that I've had to use an Uber, I totally spend the extra bit of money to get the big premium oh, one, yeah. so I don't have to ride in someone's like '84 Corolla. <laughs> the cigarette burns down there. Yeah. Like the, seat, the seats look like they have C-section scars. What happened in here? Mm. But Drug yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't know. I mean, you you have to be a special per. I mean, it takes a special person to be a coach, but it takes a real special person to be an Uber driver because you you then become someone's therapist, or in my case, I became their therapist, <laughs> and the guy got lost because he was so mad at his wife. That he was just driving, it, it should have been a four minute drive from one of the section of Roseville to the gallery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, literally all I needed this guy was to take me from where we were recording Into the Gray podcast to the gallery, which is not even a four minute drive. Took us 35 minutes. Fantastic. The guy got lost. Huh. And then proceeded to tell me all the issues with his wife and all the stuff that he does for this very ungrateful woman. And then he looks at me. He turns around while the car is driving. <laughs> and he looks at me. He goes, yo, so bro, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like I should leave her, right? <laughs> and he's looking for me for validation for everything he's told me. I while the car's right. moving in one direction, his head's looking in the other. And I'm just like, yeah. Totally, please get me there once. <laughs> and I got out of the car, he was like, oh, hey man, thanks for listening. I was like, good luck, buddy. <laughs> One star review for that guy. That's funny. But yeah, so. No, that sounds like an interesting thing for the, for the purple gym people. Yeah, I know. I mean, again, they're in the gym, so they're starting. At least they're in the right track. It's just. Man, like the, all the stuff's new though, right? It's nice and clean. It was very clean. It was a new gym too. Like they had just put it in that like two months ago, three months ago. So everything was brand new, but you're just still like, yeah. come on guys. The gym doesn't have any character. Do they have a pool there? I don't think so. No. Like, you know, you walk into a world, you walk into a gym that's kind of been around, it's got those scrape marks, the dumbbell a little bit tattered. Mm -hmm. Like granted, this place was, was new. Yeah. But the people there just had... It's like the equipment was just there. Like when you walk into a gym, those equipment, that's tools. Like that's my yeah. toolbox. That's a hammer. It's my screwdriver. Yeah. They didn't understand. They were decoration for the them. tool. Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. And it's just so much, there's so much more that they can get out of being there, but they don't know. They don't know how. I need to take a tour of one of these. You should. You should. You should get a day pass. Go work out on one. Um, so once I explained this to my family, they were like, oh, 
okay, now we get it. Because, again, it's one of those things where if you don't know. If you don't know, yeah. You don't know. And my mom's like, well, I, you know, I take some of the classes there, and they have an instructor. I said, oh, you know, that's good. How often does the instructor come by and correct your form? Cricket, cricket. <laughs> I was like, mom, that's kind of a major thing. Like, you know, you're in your 60s. Yeah. How well are you moving? Probably not very well. And now you're trying to move fast at pace with everybody else. Like, that's it can be dangerous. Yeah. It's kind of look like, oh, I guess you're right. Yeah. So it's like, man, come on. Just anyway, I guess it, I also take for granted the, the amount of research and knowledge that I have on working out. Yeah. And if you don't have that, then. I mean, you yeah, you've got you know, it's been a part of two decades of exactly of just learning from trial and error and an actual from study. Yeah. And, yeah. So I, I was I was very kind with all my remarks because again they're trying. Yeah. They just you know, and that's all you can ask for. It is. It is. And I just put some heart into. Wish it. I could have helped more of them, not just my brother. Yeah. But uh, I text my brother just about every other day, like, hey, dude, you know, what's your workout today? Oh. Same workout we did. Which we're going today. Uh, same workout we did. He's, he's trying to practice everything we talk. That's what sure. he knows now. His back is going to be amazing. He's, yeah, I hope so. Well, that's the thing, dude. He's like 6'4", 6'5". Oh. 260, 265. So, that's a big dude. Yeah. yeah, I keep telling him, like, bro, look, when you start lifting and you lose all that fat, because he was up to almost 290, 300. But he's he's big. He's big bumped. Yeah. I was like, you're going to be the biggest one out of all of us. Like, I should not be are teaching you, you to do this. Are you the shortest one? I'm the shortest. Five, eleven, three quarters. I call myself six foot. Um, I'm the widest and the fittest. No big deal. I'm Coach D. My brothers will love that one. But, uh, but he's definitely, he has the most potential to be the biggest. Mr. Yeah. He has six, five. On a and he's, got, he's got the broad shoulders. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Yeah. Except he has to take care of himself. So he's falling in. So I'm trying to get him to correct mm. all that. Uh, but he's, we're working on just developing. He's just getting the base. Musculature. Yeah. yeah, musculature. Like, just get these muscles working. We were doing some flies, and, you know, those were one of the best for that chest pump. Such a good squeeze. So we had, I was doing, you know, half the rack, just having a good time. And I was like, oh, you're a big guy, you know, let's try, let's try 20. Okay. We went to the fives. He's trying to press, and I'm feeling the pecs in here, and like they don't know how to move yet. Yeah, they don't know to move. So he was, he just had the five slit, and I mean, he was doing sets of five, and it was worked. Now, if you're oh, 260, I'm sure he was sore later. Yeah, he was very sore. If you're 260, that's that's 10 pounds. But if if you just don't, if you don't know, do and your muscles have never done it before, you're waking up things that have been asleep for a very long time. So I think he kind of got the the feel of that's what it's supposed to feel like. Mm-hmm. And like the next three or four days, he was pretty sore. He was pretty sore. But he never felt like that before. And we worked out for maybe 45, 50 minutes. But that was it. And before, I was like, so what kind of workouts are you doing? Talk? He's like, you know, I'll do cardio. I'll do some of these machine stuff. He's like, I work here. So, I'll, you know, I'll work out for about three hours. Oh, man. That's what I said. I was like, okay, that's Cut that down a little bit. So anyway, we got, I mean, I'll say probably 20x the output and the the impact on his body that he normally has in a three-hour time frame in less than an hour. And he's just like, dude, I didn't know that this is what we needed to do. So that's him, and now there's a full gym of people like that. Well, you know this just as well as I do or any other business person. Being efficient doesn't mean that you have to be busy. It, exactly. Yep. So whether it's, you know, workout based and you just, you know, you come in, you get your stuff done, go home, go eat, go do whatever else you got to do. The same thing applies to business, which is a great way to segue into the next segment. That is. But there's, I mean, I know when I used to be a super freak, I would super train. Super freak, super freak. She's super freak Sorry. guy. Ow. <laughs> uh, I would work out for three hours straight, but they were nonstop where I was yeah. huffing and puffing and I was like, I'm, I'm either gonna pass out or throw up or both. We were having two intra workout shakes. You know, I was never into those. No? I know I've tried oh, a bunch dude. of them. 
Well, because I, I spent so much time learning nutrition uh, that the only time that I ever really felt that, oh man, like that, that was truly beneficial is if I was really depleted from dieting from so aggressively. I see. Um, but other than that, the only thing I ever really used those for was like freaking instant glycogen pump. Like, uh, see, I would use, in workouts, mm-hmm. I would use whey protein shakes and then I would do a glycogen replacement. Because mm-hmm. when I was in the Navy, I had, I was by myself. Yeah. So I'd get off work at three and I'd go work out from like four till seven. You gotta eat. Yeah. I'd eat in the gym right there. Yeah. Um, but sipping on the protein shakes, I don't do that anymore. Cause I just, no, like, then I, I was also like 22. I like to make them just into just quick shots. Yeah. Get it over with. I don't want to overload my stomach with just, well, again, that's probably, there's obviously the part we can go with when you're just learning and you're reading magazines that are sponsored by supplement companies that tell you you should eat these shakes pre in and post workouts. Three shakes in a day. That means I'm going through a tub every 72 hours. What, what was that one thing that Jay Keller used to promote like crazy? Uh, oh, uh, Cell Tech. Cell Tech. Yeah. Cell Tech and Nitro Tech. Oh, that's right. I forgot about the Nitro Tech. They, they sold them as the pairs. Yeah. I took Nitro Tech for so long. Hey, man, if you want to gain 20 pounds of water weight, get that Cell Tech. That was when I first started realizing after he left uh, Muscle Tech. Muscle Tech. That's when it like hit me like, oh yeah, these guys don't actually use these products. They're just on contract. Totally rocked my world, 100%. I was sort of like, oh man, Jay Cutler's Muscle Tech, Ronnie Coleman's BSN. These guys are rivals, the companies are rivals. Oh man, it's so great. Mm-hmm. Then you see Jay Cutler with Universal Nutrition. Or you see Dexter Jackson who's Muscle Tech with Universal Nutrition. Mm-hmm. And with BSN and then Muscle, and you're like, wait a minute, you guys were, oh. Yeah. So we've, I was hurt. We've talked back and forth with a couple like pro athletes. They said, you know, this is what the thing is. And they're like, okay. And the first question is, what's the contract look like? Like, okay. Supplements look like. Here's here's my thing. It's like, I'm gonna send you the products, and if you can if you can take them and you can really truthfully get behind them with art, then we'll talk about what your what your monthly checks would look like. And I've talked to so many pro athletes where they're like. Well, I don't, I don't even use anything over the counter. Or I might take fish oils, and that's it. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Or, you know, some people are just set in their ways. They're like, I only will take these, but I'll work for you. Well, that doesn't, that doesn't do me any good because if your social circle or, you know, the close that people yeah. know that you only take X, Y, and Z, but you're saying, I love this stuff over here, well, to me, your credibility is gone because now you're just flat out liar. And I don't want, I don't want that around. No, hundred percent. Well, I'll tell you what, all you can do is get somebody one of your shoes and then they're addicted. I told you, so we, uh, I think I told you about this. I sold one of the fat burners to a lady in New York and the Hershey's no, uh, Oh, the that, that's totally different one. That's, that's military wife. Ah, uh, but so, I don't know, like the better part of a year ago, I got an order from Amazon, sent this thing out to this lady in New York, and then like two days later, I got an email back through Amazon saying that this person's requesting to make a return. Now, for as long as we've been in business, I've never once had a single return before. And it, not that it's the end of the world, you know, yeah. it is what it is. Some people just, you know, it doesn't, they either don't like it or they made a mistake, whatever. So, but I always, I was wondering, well, maybe, maybe something happened. Maybe I can help. So I contact the person directly. I say, look, you know, I'm more than happy to authorize this return. Um, just help me understand the situation a little bit better, you know, because the description for your reason was extremely vague, you know, what happened. So the lady actually contacted me uh, through my direct line and we had a conversation and it turns out that she just chugged the fat burner and ended up giving her kind of just like a blah kind of feel. Yeah. I said, oh, well, it even states on there. Yeah. Please, yeah, don't do not do that. And she goes, oh, well, I didn't, I didn't read it. I wanted to be extreme. I didn't read it. And uh, she's like, okay, well, let me try it tomorrow the way that you just told me how to do it. And, uh, and we'll go from there. So I didn't hear anything back from her. A couple of days later, I call and leave a voicemail. I sent this lady an email, I have her private line, so I even sent her a text, 
trying to get a hold of this lady for like the better part of like two months. Can never get a call back from this lady, no email, no nothing. Like, well, maybe it's one of those people that maybe she really didn't like the product and just yeah. didn't want to have the conversation and just said, oh, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that. So yeah. I'll just throw it away. So we do so many orders that I can't remember everything off the top of my head. Yeah. And I start noticing like, wow, I'm sending out a lot of these fat burners to this place in New York. And I'm like, well, like I've never even heard of this town. So I keep getting these orders, keep getting these orders. And I start looking, I'm like, they're all going to the same address. Uh -huh. Yeah. So <laughs> this lady nailed it. Yeah. Who went from being like, Oh, like this thing, you know, you know, wasn't all that awesome for me. Gave her the proper instructions on how to take it. This lady by herself has ordered 20 fat burners from us. And she's gotten every one of her coworkers hooked on. It. No way. Yeah. And so they had contacted me a while back and said, you know, everyone at this office is in love with this stuff. We're hooked. <laughs> We've got bottles of this just in the office and we all just share it as a community. Oh, that's smart. And I was like, oh, well, that's great. But so I said, okay, you know, I said, thank you. Give me, give me everyone's shirt size and I'm going to send you guys a care package of, you know, t-shirts, sweatshirts and some other stuff. And uh, I want you guys to try the, the no hydro. And so I send the stuff out, which I wasn't really thinking about it at the time. I was like, oh, I'll just, I'll send this stuff out. Well, when you send out a gigantic box of sweatshirts and other things to New York from California, that's expensive. Ah. <laughs> and I just looked at it and the lady at the post office, she was like, do you want to send it next day? I was like, no, I don't want to send it next day. <laughs> and, uh, and so they emailed me back. They were like, oh my God, like, you know, we've got so many people going through this stuff. We need to order it in bulk. Like, can you hook us up? I was like, of course I can hook you guys up. And I was like, well, how much do you want? And they're like, a box. It was like, well, a box is 12. And they're like, it's not going to last very long. But yeah, we'll just do a box at a time. I was like, well, how many people work at this office? How big is the office? I don't know. But enough to require them to order oh. this many yet. So. That's awesome, though. Well, the stuff works. And it tastes good. It's easy to have. It's It's been great. We've For as long as we've been in business, I've never had a complaint other than Lena not loving the flavor, but she loved the way yeah. that it made her feel and the lack of bloat in the face. Me personally, flavor is secondary to result. I'll take something I don't like the taste of if it's like, dang, it works. Mm -hmm. Period. But not everybody's like that. No. I'm a little over the top when it comes to commitment. Yeah. Period. I walk around the freaking comb all day to make sure my hair stays in the I saw that. <laughs> Commitment, two feet in. Yep. Uh, let me use the head real quick. I'm sorry. Full bathroom break. Bon you. I hopped on social media real quick, and the first thing that popped up, do you remember I was telling you that uh, that company wants to do some work? Uh, yeah, the dad one? The dad one? Yeah. They were on Fox TV. Whoa. I know. Good for them. Sweet. Everyone wants to work for me. Um, what do you mean work for you? Everyone wants a job from me. Oh, oh really? Yeah. I mean, not, not like that's like the end of the world or a bad yeah. thing, but um, I, I don't know whether it's, whether they think like the fitness industry is, you know, different in their head or whatever, or if they just generally want to work for me. But I get calls at least two times a day or some type of email with someone saying that they want to work for me. Like, I, I Are you get, looking for people? No. No? No. But I fired everybody. <laughs> Dude, if you can do it all by yourself. It's, it's easier. Well, one, I get to pocket more money, which is nice too. Yeah. But I don't like babysitting people. And you have to babysit just about everybody on top of like pull them up through the training process. Right. Nobody's like two steps ahead of you. Like can see when you say, hey, do this. They go, okay, I can see what that's leading. And you go, oh, yeah. Yeah. Then that I mean, for the most part. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, like for the most part, I don't really want anyone to work for Black Crane anymore. Because it's been such a hassle of like, I got to make sure that you're selling the products the right way. Yeah. Because if I tell someone like, okay, this is what the product does, they're just like, oh yeah, I'll just wing it. And then someone calls me, they're like, 
uh, well, this guy says it does this. I'm like, that's not what it fucking does at all. <laughs> so just frustrating. But I want the only people that I really want to hire is like, if I know for a fact someone can do a job way better than I can, yeah. then I'm all on board because I know I can't do everything a hundred percent. Yeah. Something, something's going to have to give. And if I can focus on lore and I can focus on black crane, then I need outside salespeople or an entire sales team to do stuff for freedom group for the alcohol company. Mm-hmm. Because one, I don't, I, I, I'm spread thin as it is. I don't have the time. And if, if someone knows that field better than I do, cause I don't, yeah. I, I started drinking because I started dating the wrong women. So I don't, I don't know that niche of, yeah. of the business world that well. I can't just be like, well, we can offer you X amount of cakes and da 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 da. Like, you don't know, like, you know, supplements. Right. Or fitness. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. But we were talking about having two feet in, and I think one of the greatest, the greatest motivational speeches that was ever given was never recorded. We've talked about this before, so we know everybody. We're always, somehow, somehow one way or the other, we're friends with just about everyone. In the mix. Yeah, and that's, that's a great thing. It's always kind of weird, too. It's like, oh, I know that person. But like Everything comes right back around. This, this circle, that, and I don't know whether it's just the fitness community or because we're, we're business people and it just broadens the horizon for us. But we know everybody. I definitely think it's both. Fitness world and then when you own yeah. your own facility or your own company. You end up with two circles. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And uh, it's the neat thing. So we get to meet all sorts of neat people all the time. And I remember sitting down with, with a good friend of mine, uh, Jen, who runs World Stream San Francisco. And she gave the greatest motivational speech about not, not having one foot out and there's no, there's no plan B that you got to be two feet in and commit to it. That's the only way that things are going to thrive for you business wise. And she said, look at this, like the gym does very well. We've got tons of members. I mean, world's gym of San Francisco is world famous. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows that. Gym. Years. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a very, very cool place. And it has that neat atmosphere where you walk in and you're just like, oh, it's going to be a good day. Um, but she said, look at this gym. It's very successful. But if one day the gym failed, you know what? It's not the end of the world because I'm not above a McDonald's job. I'll work at McDonald's. I'll start from the bottom and I'll work my ass off to get to the top, be a manager, and then go up corporate. And I'll work up that ladder until I'm the best of whatever I can do. Mm-hmm. It's like you're not above a McDonald's job. You gotta put two feet in. That's the only way that it's gonna thrive. Because if you've got one foot out, well now that job or whatever you're trying to grow is a hobby, and it's not getting the nu- the nutrition that it needs to grow, and it's just gonna be stagnant the whole time mm-hmm. because you're so concerned with well if this doesn't work, then I can go and do that, and if that doesn't work, then I can go do this. You need to jump in with both feet. And just go. And that's how it is. There's no more plan B. And that's how it worked out with the supplement world. I jumped in, both feet. It's like, look, I got a kid. I'm a full-time single parent. I don't have, I don't have time for this to fail. Mm-hmm. It cannot fail. Because if it fails, then I failed as a dad. And that kid will go hungry. Yep. And I'll let myself go hungry. I mean, there's been days where I didn't eat because... I didn't have the money for it. I had to make sure that that kid had food Mm -hmm. and it took time and it took a lot, a lot of tears. There was a lot of bad nights crying, wondering what am I doing? How am I going to make this work? It's it's almost that inner like why question. Yeah. But you have the inside, you know why, even if you can't even explain it. Yeah. Why you, you put yourself through this kind of stuff. Yeah. Entrepreneurship is very bizarre because it's a very weird mindset. Yeah. I'm, and, and my friends are always like, you're always on your phone. I'm like, I'm not being, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm really working. Like, I wake up and I start working. Mm-hmm. I'm still working as I'm brushing my teeth. 
when I'm laying in bed. I'm not just sitting there twiddling my thumbs on YouTube like, no, yeah. oh, look at that guy. He did something funny or Charlie bit my finger. I'm like, okay, how do I interact with more people? How do we, how do we turn this into a profit? Yep. I, Almost like every minute has to have a purpose. Yes. I take the little one to school. I'm yep. working. I pick her up. I'm working. I'm just... I, it's just, it's... It's a consumption. Yes. It's an innovation. It's, yeah. And what they say about entrepreneurs, they're the only people that work 90 hours so they don't have to work 40 hours. <laughs> yeah. I know that's so true. Yeah. So true. So, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, having two feet in, I mean, for the business world is very necessary, but it's also, I mean, it's the same thing with fitness because... It's your lifestyle. It's, it's going to... It's got to be a lifestyle and you know, yes, you do have some wiggle room. You can go out occasionally, you can enjoy, you know, a drink every once in a while, but you know, having a couple Oreos here and there versus eating an entire tray. Yeah. It's totally different. You yeah. gotta, you gotta know what your balance is. And your boundaries. And if you really are making a lifestyle choice, what is two feet in for you? Mm -hmm. And it will be different for everybody yeah. to start. And it's not, it's not just you know, the actual commitment of going into the gym, it's everything that's, that goes with it. You know, what is your, you know, your social circle looking like? Are the people that you're interacting with on a daily basis, are they supportive of this? Because people either grow with you or they grow away from you. Mm -hmm. And if their idea of their daily routine is, okay, well, we got off work, so we're going to go bar hopping all night long, and that's their, that's their daily routine, well, that's probably not the best interest for your new daily routine. Exactly. If you've got, you know, history of, you know, family illness, you know, it's got to be taken very seriously. It's time to start making changes, and you can't just make that 50-50 change. Like, well, I, I started working out. That's, that's good. That's great. But for those real changes to be made, it's got to be working out, diet, sleep, lifestyle choices, stressors, all that stuff plays an effect. And it, the problem is it doesn't affect you so much in your teens, your 20s, your 30s. It waits until the end of the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And then all of a sudden when you are more focused on yourself because you've had your fun, you've worked, you've raised your kids, and now it's retiring, and you're stuck between, it hurts to stand up. I, I have heart issues, I'm 60. Mm -hmm. I have knee issues, I'm 55. Like you're looking down the barrel of another 30, 40 years of life and you're you're in trouble. Yeah. And I think people need to start making those those two feeling commitments to their lifestyle at a much earlier stage, especially in this area, where everybody comes from a desk job, everybody comes from the corporate world. You're gonna have to make some conscious conscientious changes to what you do every day to affect your next 30, 40, 50 years. Yeah. Because my dad, my dad's dad, my grandpa. They were up on their feet all day. Yeah. Getting to 90 was no big deal because they were always moving and they didn't have tech neck, didn't have any massive ailments except for just working 60 hours a week manually. Yeah. But at least their body was alive. Yeah. Now, when we sit for so long, we're slowly killing our bodies in one form or fashion and think that, you know, an hour class three times a week is going to fix that. It's not always the case. Yeah. Well, so I've got a buddy. And, uh, you know, he's, he's part of the younger generation. He's not a baby, but he's not old either. Yeah. And, uh, and he, he had a decent drinking problem. And, you know, he wasn't doing, you know, all the best things in his life. So I sat him down and I said, look, you know, you just got engaged. You want to build a family? He goes, I do. He was like, that's a big goal of mine. And I said, okay. Well, then you need to make some serious life adjustments. Because do you want to marry her to leave her a widow? Or do you want to marry her to grow old with her? Yep. Because the path that you're going down, you're going to give that woman a ring, and you're going to give her like a good year, and then you're going to be gone, and then what? He just sat there and just almost in tears, not even knowing what to say. Yeah. I was like, do you want to bring a child into the world and then not be there to watch and to enjoy the child's laughter and, yeah. and the goofy things that kids do that are just so entertaining? He goes, oh, well, yeah, I want to be there. That's the whole point. And I was like, well, then, then stop doing stupid stuff. Get your stuff together. And it really is that simple. Just most people know how to get on the right. Yeah. Just, you just got to make the commitment to do it. Yeah. And you, you can't do it that way. No. 
you don't, you know, it doesn't have to be crazy where you weigh every meal out yeah, to every yeah, gram. Exactly, yeah. Just again, balance. Yeah, you know, start start cutting out some sodas. You know, reduce reduce alcohol content. You know, if you can get it down to zero, awesome. You know, just start start going in the right direction. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's the scariest thing. I remember having that conversation with. It's like, do you want to marry someone just to make them a widow? Well. And then I thought about it for myself, you know, it's, you know, I want to be around for my kid, you know, it's, it's just her and me. Right. Like, oh God, that's, that's the scariest thing. It's just trying to picture just leaving a child. Like, yeah. Thanks. No, that's why I, in my, early in my thirties, I say early in my thirties and when I turned 30, <laughs> I made that choice of, okay, time starts settling in mm -hmm. to my Next 30 years, yeah, which is different than my first 30. Yeah. Because I still want to be able to go out and run and play and have a good time with my, my daughters as they grow older and maybe my grandkids. Mm -hmm. And knowing that my style of lifting, my style of training, my style of working out, and my all in it towards that, that side wasn't going to let me do it. Yeah. So I backed off and put my all in commitment towards moving properly getting everything kind of back to center and then going forward, which is what I've been doing. Yeah. Um, and I'm okay with that. You got to let the ego go yeah. a lot of times. You just say, my priorities are no longer me. It's getting me to, you know, 50 or 60, really, really healthy. So I can enjoy having my daughters when I grow up, yeah. enjoy my grandkids eventually, which is still weird to say. Um, but you're, you're thinking in that direction, which is good. Yeah. I'm not just thinking about this weekend. Too many people still just think about this weekend. Or they think, uh, you know, by that time, technology will be somewhere. Or or they, they do realize what's going on. Mm -hmm. And the worst part is to go, yeah, I just don't want to think about it. Yeah. And they totally just push away the, the reality of their future, ignore it, because that gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And then you have the guilt of where you are staying, and then you just, like, screw it. And that's where you don't want to go. That's where you got to really check yourself. And make sure you're you're headed on the right path. Yeah, I mean, when I started, when I started becoming more consciously aware of my life situation and then the people that I was allowing into it, mm -hmm. I just started going through and just, I mean, removing people from my life. Trim the tree. I had, I mean, before before I had my child, I me, mean, you could scroll through my phone, just keep swiping and swiping, and there was this contact after contact, and then I started realizing. Well, none of these people are friends. They're just acquaintances that, that I wouldn't, I know how they are in their day-to-day -day lives. I wouldn't want them around my kid. So if I wouldn't want them around my kid, why would I want them around me? Now, I can't even scroll from A to Z. It's all in the same block. That's the amount of people in my little bubble. And if, if you're not there, we're probably not gonna hang out. Yeah, no, 100%. So, yeah. It's really hot in here. It's very warm. Big man's sweating. I know, you got sleeves on. I know. You. No choice. I'm getting hungry. So, well, let's wrap this up and then I'll tell you a funny story. I think, uh, I think that covers it. I think that's it. That's we, good. We yeah. talked, talked about your Purple Gym experience. Purple gin. <laughs> uh, I love that song. Purple Rain. Purple, Purple Rain. Rain. The Prince. Yep. Yep. And then we uh, talked about. Covered some deeper issues. Yeah. Both feet in. Yep. Yeah. All right, Dallas, I think we'll call it. Sounds good. If any of you guys have any questions, feel free to hit us up on Instagram or Facebook. You can find us at CrossFitSM.com, that'd be for the CrossFit San Mateo Gym, and the Black Crane Supplements.com. Yep. And you can also find us on Instagram, Black Crane Supplements. Yep. At Instagram. Yep. And then Coach D Wall uh, on Instagram for me. Do you have Twitter? Do you have any other social media? I don't. I'm not a great social media ad. That's all we use too. Yeah. I don't use Facebook for anything, it's just, just yeah. Instagram. Instagram for you. I know where you will not find me is Tinder. Huh. Yeah, I know me either. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. Let's wrap on that episode. Yep. Have a good day.